Entrepreneurship is baseball. Entrepreneurship is UFC. Entrepreneurship is baseball because if you go three for 10, you will go to Cooperstown, New York and be in the Hall of Fame. Three out of 10 and you're one of the best ever. Next, UFC. Nobody's gonna end up being undefeated in that. You're gonna fucking lose. We all know this. The best always make mistakes because we're fucking humans. If you are scared of losing, first, why? If you're worried about losing, this is not for you. You're listening to the Born Primitive Podcast. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Born Primitive Podcast. I am without Big Tone today. He is on paternity leave, but I am actually recording up in New York City today. A super special guest, Gary Vaynerchuk. I'm actually at his office at VaynerX. Gary is an absolute badass, and it was a privilege to be able to get up there. Gary is a serial entrepreneur, serves as the chairman of VaynerX, CEO of VaynerMedia, and the creator and CEO of V Friends. Honestly, Gary's probably considered one of the leading global minds on kind of what is coming next in culture, business, and the internet. So I'm going to transport over to New York City right now, and I hope you enjoy the episode. All right. We are here with Gary V. I'm going to get right into it, guys. Um, there's so many topics we can cover with Gary. Um, he's got he's got depth, and he, he's so um, proficient in so many different things. But Gary, I want to start with just um, general entrepreneurship. Okay. Um, obviously... You know, I know your your origins, um, yep. kind of being a scrappy entre- entrepreneur from the early days. And yes. So just could you quickly walk us through the, the early years of Gary V and particularly like I want people to know what it takes to get through that initial inertia. Um, you know, for m- my business, it took seven years before I made a penny. Right. Yep. A lot of people, I think, get want that fast. want that instant yep. gratification. And I think um, people need to know what they're getting themselves into. So walk us through the early years of you, the early Gary V, cutting your teeth um, and, and uh, you know, doing your thing. I think I've talked about it so much and I'm happy to hear as well, but I want to actually get to the crux of what I think you're asking. Friends, if you're listening, by the way, this very handsome, structured man, <laughs> and you're a fan of him, what he's trying to do right now is very smart, which is, he's how old are you now, brother? I'm 36. Yeah, you're at the place now where like it is crystal clear to you. This is not confusing. 99% of people think entrepreneurship's cool because they think about the wealth that comes along with it. Now clout comes along with it. Uh, for some people it's destiny, like for me, potentially you, I want to get to know you better. Like it's in them, but what's a, what's the struggle is for guys like you and I that clearly have some level of interest to communicate journeys or ideas or with the hope that it's beneficial is we're aware at this point that most people don't have the grit, the determination, the comfort with uncomfort the ability to navigate the truth of this, which is everyone got so caught up with a Mark Zuckerberg or these stories of 20 year olds that hit, they didn't understand that 99 point, I'm actually gonna take a pause and now go to it. Friends, listen to me. 99.99999% of people have to eat fucking shit, judgment of others, self doubt along the way, fucking like lonely ass fucking moments for three, six, nine, 12 years, every day, every hour, every minute, every second being in the foxhole, no shit, most people don't do it. We got so into the glamor of it. I am a poster child. I'm one of the humans, one of the hundreds of humans, hundreds out of 8 billion that caught this moment where entrepreneurship went from not being talked about to the, as cool as being a rapper or an athlete or a celebrity. I'm very aware of it because I lived most of my 30s without entrepreneurship being cool. So I lived my 30s, my 20s, my teens, and my childhood. And so the the lemonade stands and the gar- and the garage sales and the shoveling fucking snow when you're nine and it snows and you're from an immigrant poor family and it's in you to build and you're a builder and you're a provider, you, unlike your friends in the neighborhood who are building fucking snowmen and sledding, 
you fucking grab a piece of shit shovel that's in your parents' house from the fucking Soviet Union, which was like a fucking, like a fucking guard, like not a snow shovel that you buy at fucking Walmart. This fucking piece of shit shovel that I shoveled with was literally from fucking Russia and was like the kind of shit you use in a farm. Like, you know, the whole shovel head was like only yeah. this big. It's like and cast you, iron steel. Yeah, yeah, like fucking it weighed more to me, bro. Mm -hmm. Like I remember, I'm not bullshitting you. I had to drag it because I didn't have the strength to carry it. And you're ringing doorbells and you're fucking hoping that somebody says, Yes, I will let you fucking spend the next 45 minutes of hard labor to give you $3. And when you get 15 of those people to say no to you, no, I will not pay you to shovel snow. When you stand behind a fucking lemonade stand in the heat of the summer and you fucking watch car after car after car after car not stop, you start to fucking understand that no is your friend. Real entrepreneurs know that no is your friend. Wannabe entrepreneurs, ideological entrepreneurs, people that have entrepreneur tendencies, people that view successful entrepreneurship as a way to put a band-aid on the gap of their own self-esteem, they think knows the enemy, which is why they fucking quit. Well, I'm curious to, to get your opinion. Do you think, because so my version of that was growing up, walking around the neighborhood with a lawnmower and a weed whacker, yeah, yeah, saying, hey, sense. can I mow yeah. your lawn? Classic, right? And yep. uh, fifth grade. And where did you grow up? I was in Indiana. Love right? it. And, um, and yeah, it's that was just cliche. all I knew, you yeah. know what I mean? And you know, it grew into like having 35 lawns. And it's it, awesome. Good little hustle for yeah. high school, yeah. middle school, high school. Get a couple bucks. Um, but uh, do you think people are born with that yes. knack? Yes. And But like, I also think it's developable yeah. to a certain degree. Do I think some people are born to be better at basketball or skiing or cooking? Yes, I do. I think all of us, every single, good news, every person listening, you were born with certain tendencies that you're better than the average bear on. Oh, that was fun. That was a pun there intended. It is. There it is. I, I that was a it. Yogi the Bear <laughs> reference, but that worked right here. Perfect. That was fun. Uh, I think I was born with a high ceiling, natural talents, and then I fucking cultivated and worked the fuck of it for 40 years and became who I became similar to what LeBron's doing similar to what you know people do so do I think that if somebody worked as hard as you and I and had less entrepreneurial skills and tendencies DNA wise do I think they'd be less financially successful I do do I think they'd be less happy I don't think so so that's cool to me you know what I mean yeah like I think it I think there is a version of but I also think like look I think I could like Back to entrepreneurship, I think you and I both could have made less or more money. We were given all the ingredients, but we made decisions along the way. We made decisions along the way, you know? And so I don't think money is the scoring card in a lot of ways, though it's one of them, obviously, in entrepreneurship. So yes, I think some people are born with more talent, and then I think some people are born with less talent but had parents that pushed entrepreneurship on them and that made them slightly better at it. I, I look at basketball. I believe that me, my brother, and my son have the general same natural skills in basketball. We're the same size, we're the same shape. Xander eventually will be. But my son is 8,000 times better than me at basketball and my brother is 2,000 times better than me at basketball. And it's because I fell in love with basketball later in life, so I'm not great at it. But I liked it so much and my brother was 11 years younger. We played a lot, he liked it more, he put in more time and effort, he's better. My son's a fucking, real player. He's nice. 12 and he's been really all in since four and he's just a different version. But I feel like we all have the same actual talent. So good news, everyone. Hard fucking work and practice is real shit. Yeah. I think that can make up for you talent. Know, a, a lack in talent in, we in, know in this many in ways. Sports, bro. Yes, of course. Like, if you know anything about sports friends, I promise you the most talented were not the all time greatest. The most talented who also worked their fucking face off became the greatest of all times. Uh -huh. And people... The amount of, you know, I have a sports agency now. We have hundreds of athletes. The amount of guys that told me like, bro, I just outworked everyone. Like, he's like, half my high school te football team was better than me. But they fucking got into drugs, girls, dumb shit, or just stopped working as hard. They took their talents for granted. They got hurt. Obviously, sports, unlike entrepreneurship, has that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it's a beautiful world now. The world's simple. Like, yes, there's talent that you're born with. But then there's the thing everybody on this call, on this listen, on this podcast can do, which is you can control how much you go. The reason I got so into mindset shit, like when I think about why did the fuck did I start talking about self-esteem? That wasn't in the fucking bingo card 15 years ago. Oh shit, that's the thing that's stopping people from working hard because they're worried about people's judgment. It's very clear to me now, you know, I, I, I turn 49 next week. That means 50s real shit for me now, right, bro? So, you know, it's fun because I feel like I'm at halftime. I think I'm going to live to 100. So 
it's fun to be like, how the fuck did I get here? And what's very clear in how the fuck did I get here as a public figure, it's I have this deep dream that every time I do a podcast like this, so for example, this one, there's gonna be people that have never heard of me because that's how the world works and they'll hear me and three of those people will be like, this fucking dude's awesome, I'm gonna listen and that's where I can leave positive impact. There's gonna be another group of people here who used to listen to me who don't check in with me anymore, who are gonna hear something new or different or slightly different because they fuck with you heavy and now I'm here and they're like, oh shit, let me get back on that train a little bit. There's gonna be other people here who don't fuck with me at all that they don't like me. They're like, fuck that guy, he curses, I don't like his style, in Jersey, whatever. And, <laughs> but they love you so much and like, ah, fuck, I don't even wanna listen to this, but I love Bear and fuck it, let me listen, let me see if this douchebag comes up with anything worthwhile. And I might say something that's worthwhile for them. All for the same game of like, God, I wish people knew how real this is. They can. These politicians, they're just telling you you can't. They're telling you I, a loser, can fix everything for you. And losing players believe them. Yep. I want everyone who's listening to realize, fuck your mommy and daddy, fuck the president, fuck your boss, fuck me, fuck you, Bear. Like fucking you, Johnny, Sally. Believe this or not, no bullshit. No rah, rah, rah. I don't, I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm a dude that builds big fucking companies. And yeah, I talk about optimism because it's real. Because I've watched people in deep shit situations just change their shit, start to hang out with positive people, start doing positive things, and good, miraculously good shit happened. Go fucking figure. Probably. I know every time I've done wrong behaviors, bad shit happened. And every time I've done right behaviors, good shit happened. And I'm obsessed with over-communicating that to people, even if they're listening right now and I just did my rant and they're like, fuck this dude, he's full of, I, I, you know what, Bear, I can hear them. Yeah, I can hear the dude driving right now who's a big fan of your podcast, who's like, nah, whatever, dude, you got lucky. Or nah, not for me. Or if you knew what childhood I had. I'm like, bro, I'm 50 almost now. I've met people who were fucking happy who had to go 15 years of working hard because they grew up in a fucking household with child fucking molestation and fucking alcoholism and fucking drug use. And I was a poor student and grew up in bad neighborhoods and went to a shit college with bad neighborhood kids. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Then I got fucking, I fucking won and I met with unlimited people who have fucking rich kids who are all fucked up and like I've lived. And the fucking reality is bare that it's fucking achievable for these people if they just decide that it is. Yeah, that's the, I, so I speak at a, an event every quarter. It's a, it's a organization that helps transitioning special operations veterans that are going into the civilian world. So they, they bring me in, um, I'm a prior special operations veteran and to, as they do an entrepreneur panel and that we just take questions and the guys can ask anything. Hey, you know, even like, how do I start my LLC and this and that? And is that a physically done? Is that not virtual? Yeah, it's physical. It, where? Yeah. I do it in Virginia beach. Um, I'd like to do it once with you. Well, that'd be awesome. I'm, I mean, you would be, Oh my God, it'd be I unreal. I am desperate to give back to these men oh, and women. They would eat that I'm a hundred percent. All right. Well, I'll, I'll after let this, you know. Yeah. Look, work um, with my team. I'd like to do they that. They do it every quarter. Um, okay. and, and it's really cool. They take, um, you know, special operations guys, fighter pilots, et cetera. And you know, these guys are six months, it. six months left. And I think, you know, they bring me in and I think they're expecting me to come in and be like, you should do it and, you know, be an entrepreneur and it's awesome. And I, I always give them a very sobering answer and say, all right, fellas, let me break this down for you. At best, 7% chance of success. Um, in my case, um, seven years didn't make a penny. I mean, the business was making money, but when you're growing, you have to put it all in there. You're going to get a divorce um, every second of your life that you're not. I was active duty at the time. Every second I wasn't doing that, you know, in the hotels in early mornings, late nights, uh, even on helicopters. I was literally emailing suppliers when I had an extra minute. I'd take my gloves off and I'd fire an email and stick my phone back in my mag pouch. Right. Like that's how obsessed I was. Every second of the day counts when you're that busy. Um, and, you know, for these guys that maybe just did 20 years in the service, were away from their families, you know, have, you know, maybe their kids grew up without them get there a lot. I, I kind of say, hey, fellas, if this is something that, you, you know, is, is, is burning you alive and you're staring at the ceiling every night thinking of it, it's probably a, a reason to, to do it. But if you're going to come into this thinking this is some glamorous thing and that, oh, I don't want to work for the man and, you know, be the hamster wheel. I said, you know, working a nine to five with a good company and, and building back some equity with your family. And like oh, what man. I basically said is I don't want you guys to think it's this romantic thing. You because just told guys, them, you told them the truth. Like I it crushed me now. I was able to persevere and I have a great relationship with my ex who I founded it with and that, which is crazy. She's our, she's our co-founder and she's an absolute savage. She's awesome. Um, but when you're 
all you do is grind on the business, you know, 24 seven with a spouse, eventually, you know, the check engine light comes on. So I, I try to paint that picture to them of, all right, fellas, I, I appreciate the passion. I can relate because I was in your shoes, but just, Hey, a word of caution, know what you're getting yourself into. Cause this shit could be eight years and you don't, you don't see any tangible result. Right. Not only that, what ends up happening is people fall into very deep depression and suicidal thoughts when they publicly say, I'm going to build a huge company. You can't hide in entrepreneurship. When you start a company and you say to your entire inner circle, I'm starting this fucking pizza shop. I'm starting this new AI app. I'm starting this fashion brand. You have now put a fucking target on your self-esteem. Because unlike when, when you work for the man, when you work at VaynerMedia, my company, and I fire you because you know you're a fucking loser, do you know what you tell all your friends and family? Gary's a dick face, they fucked me, my manager, actually Gary's, I'm pretty nice. They're like, Gary's nice, but he doesn't get it. He doesn't, dick. You blame everybody but you. Mm -hmm. And guess what else? Everyone believes you, because everybody hates the corporation, right? Yes. When like people have excuses for everything. When you work in the government, a corporation, for a startup, you can always blame somebody. When you have a company, when inevitably, like 90 fucking three, 5% of them, inevitably, when it goes out of business in two to three years, you can say shit like, oh, I picked the wrong time, or like, I got fucked, the economy. No, 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 this is sports. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> that's what entrepreneur is. Like, you, you picked the wrong time. In all the, do you know how good the lipstick business was during the Great Depression? I'm being serious, Bear. Uh, during the Great Depression. Was it great? It was great. Oh, okay. During the Great Depression, because everybody was poor in the whole country, Humans are still humans. They still need a light. One of the few things that was somewhat luxurious, that was somewhat affordable, was lipstick. And wow. women, what lipstick exploded during the Great Depression because they couldn't go out like the Roaring Twenties and hit the clubs in their dresses, but they could put their lipstick on while they're fucking in line for porridge. Mm -hmm. And it was important for them. So whoever decided to start a fucking lipstick business during the Great Depression picked a great time. So... You know, the other thing I take to tell the fellas and the ladies is, hey, when you fail, when you make excuses, your loser friends will believe you, but all the real people know. And one of the reasons I try to talk people out of entrepreneurship a lot is if, to your point, I love how you said it, if it's not eating you up, then you're probably not it. There's, a, I'm going to pull out my report card for you, Bear. Love it. What, what year is this? It's my all four years of high school recap report card. All right. For the, for the uh, listeners, there's uh, some Ds, there a few A's, some C's. No, 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 no. Not a few A's. There's four A's, one A a year. What class was that in? Uh, uh, gym, phys ed. That's right. The <laughs> only A's I got in high school were in gym because I was a gym class hero. Nobody tried harder to win in gym than me. Just smoking dudes with the dodgeball. Literally. <laughs> and like, like, not because I was so much better than everybody, because you know, normal high school kids are like, it's fucking gym, who gives a fuck? And I treated it like game seven You're there of to the compete. NBA yeah, finals. As you should have. Look at my yeah. class rank at the bottom. All right, where's that? At the where, bottom uh, here somewhere. Uh, okay, GPA 1.67, class rank was 243 out of 254. So bottom fifth percentile for Not sure. Not bottom fifth. There was only bottom. 11 fucking losers worse than me. <laughs> why, why, why did this report card happen? It happened because I wasn't capable to go all in in something that wasn't real to me. Mm -hmm. I understand why someone can't be a good entrepreneur. Because if you, if it's not in you, it's not in you. I wasn't able to be a good student, not because I'm an idiot, but because it wasn't in me. I just couldn't. Humans are animals. It's really hard to be a giraffe when you're a fucking penguin. Yeah, people need to find what that is for them, right? And they need to be not scared to try to find it. Yeah. If you're a big bulky dude like you and fucking <laughs> ballerina is in your fucking soul, <laughs> then fucking be a ballerina. What the fuck is someone gonna say? Don't forget you're a big dude, punch him in the fucking face. And I think one lesson for people is like, I think they think they have to get it right the first time. Right. Well, and and it's like, guys, like, especially if like at any age, really, but you know, people, you know, they're in their late twenties and they're like, oh, I have this grand decision. It's like, dude, just do it and then pivot. 
right? And shift. Um, you know, my I launched a business right before Born Primitive, and it was a failed business. I, I threw the Hail Mary. It was an idea that I had in college, and I raised $110,000 in capital, and I got a lease on a warehouse and all these things, and was pitching Anheuser-Busch and Miller Coors, and I was at there. I thought I was in. And long story short, um, we had a purchase order. The director of the Miller Coors point of sale division got fired. And that New was guy it. came in. He said, I'm, clean, I'm clearing house on the program, and everything's on hold. Oh, I had just ordered fifty thousand dollars worth of foam overseas. I I raised one hundred and ten, so that was nearly half of my capital. Yep. I had just signed a lease for a seventy thousand dollar printer, a, a giant printer to print the graphics, um, and I have a five year lease on a warehouse, <clears throat> and I now have a fifty four foot container coming to me full of foam that I now can't use. So I tried to pivot and do a direct to consumer angle of like selling it to the consumer, but it was a, it was a product for a keg. That's hard. It just wasn't, it was a B2B play all day long yep. and skinny post down the field, hail Mary right through his hands at the five yard line. You know what I mean? And like that it was done. Well, because maybe I'm just too dumb to know any better. I, I immediately pivoted and launched this little born primitive thing. You know what I mean? And out of the garage. Right. Um, had I been deterred from that experience, then it wouldn't it never exist. And that's why I try to tell people, it's like, hey, you don't have to get it right the first time. Pick I, a direction I got, I and go. I got a good one. I got a good one. It helps a lot of people. I've had hundreds of emails through my career on this. Entrepreneurship is baseball. Entrepreneurship is UFC. Entrepreneurship is baseball because if you go three for 10 in baseball, you will go to Cooperstown, New York and be in the Hall of Fame. Three of 10. Three out of every 10 times, especially now with the way they're fucking trying to all hit home runs and everyone's batting 230. If you bat 300 for your career, you're fucking in striking distance. Obviously, there's other variables there, but three out of 10 and you're one of the best ever. Next, UFC. Obviously, there's been a couple guys who pulled this off, but I think people really resonate with this. Nobody's going to end up being undefeated in that. Right? Yeah. Like, you're going to fucking lose. Eat. A dude's going to come along. A lady's going to come along. That's better. There's also, you're going to lose to somebody inferior to you because it's so raw. You just might get caught with a punch. That's right. Right. There's a huge, we're looking at Madison Square Garden right now. Uh, That's why I have my office here. It's oh, real. I'll be there next week. You will. Uh, Stipe's fighting. John Jones. So I don't know if you know this, Vayner Sports rep Stipe. I do. He's one of our athletes. Born love, primitive athletes. I know that. I oh know yeah. That. I yep. forgot about that. That's I'm going to be, you're going to be there? Yeah, we're going to hang. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, look, John Jones is arguably the greatest UFC mm -hmm. fighter of all time. Stipe hasn't been in the octagon in four years. He's been firefighting in Ohio. And yet, I'm going to go into that arena and say one punch can change everything. And so, same in entrepreneurship. You might be a remarkable entrepreneur. I've had things not work for me in the last five years that are silly given my craft. You know, we all know this. Like, the best always make mistakes because we're fucking humans. I, I love that you tell people that. And I talk about it all the time. I'm like, if you are scared of losing, first, why? Almost always it means that you're worried about what people think about mm -hmm. your losses. Um, but if you're worried about losing, this is not for you. Yeah, and it, you know, there's so much, honestly, I think losing first helped me because it, 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 it painted reality, right? And, and I learned all the hard, you know, first of all, never place an order for raw materials until that PO is locked down. Get Not only is it locked yeah, down. With a deposit, I, you know what yeah, I mean? I'm, like, gonna, I'm about to go further. <laughs> until the money hits the bank, even yeah. approved money in the actual yeah. bank that can't be taken back. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I'm 23 years old. We're drinking beers with the director after and like, yeah, the you know, and, and I'm all excited. Oh yeah. Order the foam. And, you know, and you of know, course. there's many lessons oh I learned God, I from that. Even negotiating my lease, I should have had an opt out. I should have, and I did none of that. Of course. Um, so, you know, if in a way it's like, well, go ahead and do it. And actually, if you fail, that might be even better in the long term. For first time entrepreneurs listening, remember the first time you made out or had sex, <laughs> or ride a bike, or drive. I'm like petrified that I, I'm thinking back to the first time I drove a car. I'm like, how the fuck did I not die? Like, like, no shit you're gonna make mistakes the first, you sucked at everything the first, even if you're like a natural talent. Like, I'm like, LeBron. I promise you the first jump shots were not as good as the ones today. Like, no shit you fucked up. It's, entrepreneurship is a series of micro losses with an occasional macro win. All that entrepreneurship is, is micro losing every day and occasionally having a macro win. Micro losses, occasional macro win. If you're, if you're interested in that, then come and hang with us. If you're not, which is 90% of people, no judgment. 
fuck, there's a lot of nights that I wish I wasn't entrepreneurial. If you don't think there are nights, I just got out of a budget meeting. Actually, when you were here, okay. I got out of a budget meeting and I literally left it thinking, fuck, and this is a, a direct report to me running a, one of my companies. Okay. And I literally said to myself, walking out, this literally just happened, said, I wish I had his job. Because like, I want to make that kind of money without any of the fucking stress. The number two is the best job in the business. You the know, number I, two is the best job in the business. I think there's a lot of burdens that business owners carry that the employees don't realize, of right? Course. It's it's 24 seven. It can never. Now you get, get the fruits of that. Yeah. I always tell my homies. Yep, it's true. I let, I'm going to say this real quick. If, if you're confused, your employees shouldn't care or carry the burdens you carry. If you want them to, let them get as much money as you get. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah, and I'm, yep. and by the way, I don't actually expect compassion or empathy from my employees. That's not what they signed up for. They didn't sign up to work here to worry about me. I, now, some people are compassionate, empathetic humans. And like, I mean, people see me sitting in this fucking room for 15 hours a day, every hour, not eating lunch. They're like, all right, they probably, work. like, that's beautiful. But yeah, you know, I, I, I think that a lot of employees that become entrepreneurs are hit smack in the face, surprised. They're like, they didn't understand all the variables that came along. And by the way, that's what happens in parenthood. All of us grow up and judge the living shit out of our parents. And then we become parents and we're like, oh. Makes sense now. Makes sense now. <laughs> Love it. Well, I want to tell a quick Gary Vee story. It, will, it won't be that earth shattering for the listeners, but you might get a kick out of this. So I actually saw you speak. I think it was in like 2018 or 2019. It was out at Common Thread Collective. I don't know if you know Taylor Holiday, yeah, the crew out there. Yeah. You came and spoke at an event and they had all their clients come and you were talking about the the landscape of digital advertising yeah. at the time. And you got up there in typical Gary Vee fashion <laughs> was telling us like, you guys don't realize it. You are in the golden age of social media ads right now. Like, I don't even know what CAC was. <laughs> like, I know what CAC means back then for yeah. those listening, it's customer acquisition cost. Our CAC's like 55 right now. I don't, I, I don't even want to know what it was when you were speaking. It was probably like eight bucks. I don't even know. And you were saying, spend, 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 because this window of time that you are in is, is going to close quickly. Um, and it was at a time, and I think you've alluded to this before, there was actually a guy, one of the clients we were there with um, that had his, his own brand, and he would put puppies' faces on socks, right? And this guy had a Lamborghini. And I, I remember thinking, man, you know when the going's good, when you <laughs> have an e-commerce brand where you put people's puppies on socks and you have, are you rolling around in a Lamborghini? That's when the paid game is freaking, you know, that window has came because you don't need LTV, first order profitability, when CAC's that low, just printing money around the holidays and, and, and then, hey, wait three, nine months, do it over again, right? That's right. Um, but you, you were spot on in your prediction of what was going to, now you probably didn't know specifically iOS 14 and what would happen with all of that, but the general gist of what you said was 100% true. And what I see when I watch your content is it's like you're freaking Nostradamus, man. Like when it comes to this stuff, you always know where the evolution is happening and you're always like yelling from the rooftops of everyone like, hey, heed my advice because yeah. this pivot is coming or yeah. hey, there's this new platform yeah. or you know, YouTube shorts is, yeah. is the new thing. Jump yep. on that or yep. of course, TikTok. There's literally like probably 50 examples that come yeah. to mind for me just following your content that Thank I'm you. like, fuck, Gary is right. Yes, um, it's, how, it's where my reputation is how built, do you no like how do you stay on top of that and I, and I guess to load the question where do you see the next evolution yeah. going um I stay on top of it because I'm a practitioner so what's amazing is I'm a coach player you know like yeah. th right I'm like I mean just to give you context like this will maybe land for you this is this is me writing the actual copy to my Instagram post at 847 this morning. Love it. Do you have a team that ghost writes it and then you tweak it? Or was you write that original? Oh, this, as nice. you can see, they give me the content. Okay. Like we talk a lot with each other about what content. They're putting out content. They give me the things that they think I'll like. And there nice. it is. So like think about where I'm at. And I'm writing my own, my own Gary V words literally typing with my own fingers and we have so many people that get like six months of success and outsource everyone's so quick like so first of all i'm a practitioner number two i run one of the biggest marketing agencies in the world so forget about just what gary v knows on the gary v accounts which is a big personal brand account i 
run a 2,500 person global company that has employees in Singapore and Malaysia and Amsterdam and Mexico City and Toronto. So I'm sitting at the desk of a company that's spending billions of dollars in media, making hundreds of millions of dollars in creative, and I'm looking at the math and the quant and the qual. I also do a ton of investing. I'm also Gary Vee, so entrepreneurs like me now, and I'm getting hit up early on. Like, Gary Vee, I just went from zero to 10 million in one week on, on Pinterest. I'm like, you did? Let's talk. Like, I'm yeah. so in the traffic. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in the fucking traffic. Mm -hmm. Then I'm another thing. I'm selfless. Now, I don't view me telling the world that this is happening as me losing out on something. A lot of my most sophisticated friends in the world think when they see something that no one else sees, they get quiet. I get loud. Got it? Yeah, no, and that's a complete inversion, it's right? Because people, oh shoot, I know the new trick. I know YouTube shorts is the new thing. I'm not gonna say shit, right? Correct. I'm gonna put a ton of content into shorts. Correct. Right? Because I, I want mine, Correct. right? Correct. You're the opposite. I am. Right. That's awesome. I, I'm the opposite because I think the world's abundant and I feels good. Like it feels good to sit opposite someone at a table who has admiration for you that you've earned. Yeah. It feels nice. There's no, you know, I'm even getting the goosebump. There's no dollar amount that's like um $5 million right now put on this table doesn't feel better than the way I'm feeling sitting opposite of you. Now let me try to put everybody on. Live social shopping is gonna eat up the world next year. You should live on TikTok shop and whatnot. It's happening right now, in real time. You guys just selling stuff live? It's happening literally right wow, now. Wow, that's awesome. Literally right now, as you can see, out obviously podcast yep. people, if you're mm -hmm. listening, right outside my office, I built a studio. It's literally right outside my office. Uh -huh. This is expensive real estate, by the way. We're in the middle of Manhattan. A bougie <laughs> and they are literally live right now selling vFriends trading cards. By the way, if you like Pokemon, go to vFriends.com, vefriends.com. So you think that's where it's going? People want that instant, I got it first. I'm telling you right now. Exclusive vibe. I believe 5 to 20% of the content in For You pages next year or the year after will be live streams. Social shopping has already happened in China. See, what I do well is I watch. I'm very good at watching. It's really funny. I'm a real tough read at first, but if you, you know, it sounds like you really got me pegged at this point. Like, I'm a weird dude. Like, I'm always talking, but really, it's only 1% of what I do. I'm always actually just listening, right? Like, yeah, it's that's like, awesome. I've, I've yeah. got a lot of good weird, perspective. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, you guys all see me when I'm talking, but you don't see the 15 hours that when I'm not talking every day that leads to me talking about shit that's good. But it's a lot of things that go into that. But live social shopping, brother, you need to bet the farm on it. Okay. It's, you know, TikTok was a big one. I was super right about that. And it was early for people. Was, a lot of people remember it as a pandemic thing. As you know, I was yelling about Musical.ly, let alone TikTok. And I was talking about TikTok 17 and 18. Yeah, you and were. 19. There was so much getting good then. But everybody was over-infatuated with CAC and LTV mm -hmm. pre-iOS 14.5 on Meta. What they didn't realize was the brand building that comes along with virality of organic posts is more valuable than best practices on performance. The the thing you, you call it in your book is too is like the when it's an early when you're an early adopter of something new, the platform rewards you for leaning into that. It's right? like because buying real estate when people don't see it. Yeah, because they want to cultivate that new platform. It's not even yeah. that they want to even cultivate it, it's just supply and demand. Yeah. It's not even the platform's doing anything okay. for you. If I thought maybe like, you know, for example, like when Instagram stories came oh, out. Oh, no, no, like, that's smart. They You're were right. like, You're all right. of a sudden, no, CAC and that, stories no, no. was like nothing. That's you know? a feature. Okay, yeah. When a new feature comes along, yes, the platform wants to get data on it, so they will push that feature. Got it. So adopting the feature is smart. When a new platform comes along that's meant to be a winner, what happened in TikTok was there was fucking 50 million people on it, but there was only 100,000 people taking serious, making content for it. Now, there could be 100 million people on it with 50 million people being serious making content. What the fuck do you think happens? Yeah. Everyone's like, right. you know what's going on right now on Instagram? I'm shadow banned. You're not fucking shadow banned. You're losing on merit. There's more people posting than ever, and you're not as good as you think you are. Yeah, that's, and obviously once, you know, like with TikTok too, once the big corporations start advertising on it, 
now the real estate well, is that much more that's competitive. The and then funniest part. once that happens, it's yeah. like, all right, and the gig know, is up. Have you can still win, but have, you got to be the have best. Have you ever seen my keynotes? I probably do this once every 10 times when I'm in this spiel where I'm like, guys, I know this because when I leave this stage talking to you entrepreneurs and telling you to go all fucking in like I did at that event, I'm literally going to be on a call with fucking BMW later and be like, you motherfuckers have to get into this. I'm like, <laughs> I'm part of the problem you have. <laughs> You're bringing the big dogs in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and by the yeah. way, it's not like, it's not like the big dogs are listening to me. I'm putting it out like, as you back to the early point, I'm putting it out for free. I'm just trying to get anyone to fucking listen. Like the getting is good over here. Fucking go because I love the reward on the other end, which is the countless, endless emails, texts, and DMs I get that just say thank you. Do you know what it feels like when somebody DMs you and says, "I had a t-shirt business that was failing. I was fucking working as a fucking." Pre, like a lawyer that I was miserable, but I had to pay for my fucking family. I could, this thing was about to give up, but I saw your TikTok thing. On the ninth TikTok I made, I sold 10,000 t-shirts. Three years later, Gary, I'm doing $3.3 million. I make double my salary take home that it is a lawyer. I'm picking up my kid from fucking work every day. Do you understand what it feels like being as a human being? I'm reading this shit and I'm like, this is fucking insane. I as a lowly, like a, this little human over here, one of eight billion, I'm putting out this content and this fucking man, this kid on the other side of this man taking him to work, to school every day, his life is forever changed because I decided to make one TikTok to tell this guy to make TikToks. That's rewarding. I understand why people do nonprofit work. I understand why people serve this country. I understand why people want to be guidance counselors and coaches and fucking, you know, therapists. It is an intoxication when you know you're leaving a positive impact on someone for certain people. Absolutely. And I think it's one of those things. If you, if you do good enough, it comes back. You know oh what I mean? It's, it's in the biggest way, bro. And it's not in fucking Lambos and fucking hot boyfriends or girlfriends in fucking just peace of mind in fucking soul in fucking laying in your deathbed and being like, you know what? I fucking gave it a good run. One that I can be proud of. I'm pumped. My grandkids can say nice shit. I want to shift gears a little bit. Talk Please. about storytelling and authenticity, which, which you hit on, of course. Um, and I think that like, for me, I, I kind of want to present this through a born primitive example. One, to kind of have you maybe pick it apart. Okay. But also, if you feel like there are cool things about it, you know, kind of lean into yeah, what you play. think is. Let's play. All right. So I'm in the fit. Originally, you know, we started in fitness apparel. We've branched yes. out. We're in tactical apparel, um, outdoor apparel, lath leisure, jeans, flannels, footwear, everything. You know, we, we're yeah, in a you're lot full, of. You're full brand. We're in a lot of lanes now, yeah. right? And, you know. Anyone who's in apparel knows you got to be a little bit of an idiot to go in that space because <laughs> there's no barrier to entry. Um, it's any there's just there's thousands of brands and, and there's a lot of noise and you have to do something different to differentiate yourself in that space. And okay, what is your actual value proposition, right? Um, everyone can make good leggings. It's not that hard, right? Um, so you can't just be oh we make we have great sports bras and great leggings. Well, good product helps. There needs to be more to it. So we've yeah, big product, good product is the cost of entry. Yeah, that's almost, I call that like an implied 100%. task. Like you better have good product. No shit, because um, even if you're the coolest brand and you're winning on cool for a minute, you will lose over time. Yeah, if the shit sucks. That's right. Yeah. So um, what I've tried to do over the last couple of years, once I got out of the services, all right, we need to lean more into the values of our company that makes us different. And for us, a lot of that is kind of giving back to military and first responders. Um, it's authentic to us because it's the roots of our company. 100%. Um, you know, over half of our employees are veterans, um, spouses of act, active, du active duty service members, uh, firefighters, cops, or the spouses of those individuals. So over half of our building, and you know, we got 80 people, right? So it's in our DNA. That's not intentional. You know, we hire whoever comes in and is awesome, but it shakes out that, hey, that's kind of the disposition of our company. We live in the walls. Um, Was it intentional early on? Um, well, early on, it was funny. It was just, I'd hire like my buddy's wives that I served with like, Makes Hey sense. man, like can you give my old lady a, a job? Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, yeah. She seems awesome. And like, now she's the new email girl. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Knows nothing about yeah, it. Family right? vibes. That was the early days. You By know the what way, I mean? Yeah. Similar to my background, most of the people around me that have built companies with me are bad students. I just was like, yo, I get that. I'm like, oh, you're a scrapper with F's. Like if, if literally 15 years ago, if you went to Harvard and then walked in for a job and you were a kid that dropped out of high school. And, but like, but I, you told me that you sold blow pops in, in junior high. I always say, I always hired number two. That wasn't right by the way, it, but it was right sometimes. Yeah. Um, I, now 
at four, turning 49 next week, I know that half the people that went to Harvard suck shit at the game <laughs> and half the kids that sold blow pops and, and, yeah. and got to suck at the game. Well, I went to Yale so I can confirm the Harvard guy sucks. So. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, like, you know, you learn. But on the flip side, I used to blindly think all the scrapper kids would be monsters. And I was like, oh, I got bad grades for a different reason than you got bad yeah. grades. You're just not it. Well, so with this example, um, I started to realize when we would lean more into that part of our value proposition, it 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 made us stick out amongst the noise. And one example that I'm proud of. What year is that? Um, so I got out of the service at the end of 2021. So now I actually had the full week that I could, you know, I'm not doing the other job, which was very serious and stressful and intense, right? Um, and it opened up my aperture to, okay, now I can actually like take a step back and, and see how I'm going to kind of position my forces here. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, and I, I realized I say, hey, we gotta, we gotta lean more into this because that's what the consumer I think wants, at least from our consumer. And as you know, you, the, your consumers don't choose you, you choose your consumers by how you market. Right. 100%. Um, and, and I, I wanted to be more assertive with that. So one of the things we did in June, it was the 80th anniversary of D-Day coming up uh, in mm -hmm. June. And, uh, this popped into my head. I was getting on a plane in Wyoming two years ago. And I said, I want to do this. I'm going to make a D-Day shoe for the 80th. That's cool. And, uh, so we made an 80th anniversary shoe for, for D-Day and we donated, uh, $50,000 of the proceeds to fund a group of like 60 World War II veterans who went back to D-Day for the, the reunion. And a lot of them were original, like first wave Omaha beach guys. Right. Um, so those a, Omaha beach guys, nuts. I've, I, you know, I've had the luxury of, uh, of meeting a couple through my life. There's not many people I admire more. It's fucking nuts, though. That's why I'm always trying to smack my friends around. I'm like, they're complaining about like some dumb shit. I'm like, motherfucker, <laughs> do you understand what the world has been through? And how lucky Special we are. Special dudes. So I got to go with those guys, and I was a caretaker for one of them for a day at the ceremony. You know, wow. I, and, you know, it's at the wow. cemetery. Um, we went to the beach. They did a rose ceremony where wow. they each put a rose down. There was one guy. He had his friend killed on Omaha Beach behind this giant boulder that was embedded into the sand, and the boulder was still there. Wow. Uh, and, and he hadn't been back, right? So he like got to. That I mean, how wild intense. is it? There's nearly ten thousand graves at that American cemetery. It'll 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 take your breath away. Uh, very humbling. Um, it's so, ten thousand. Yeah, it's nearly ten. It's like nine thousand nine hundred something. Um, and um, and and just obviously a, a very surreal experience. But you know, I try to. Okay, this is a obviously we have to be very delicate because this is a this is a memorial moment, right? So you 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 have right, to be the careful. commercialization. Yeah, yeah exactly. You're, you're stepping away as much as you can. Yes. Yeah, so, so you got to be. You, it's a very fine line. But I also believe, hey, if I can leverage our platform and reach to do 100%. to do good, then everyone high five. So we launched that intent. Bear. Yeah. Intent. Nobody's going to look at you and be like, you fucking piece of shit. You exploited D-Day. Not if that's not your intent. Yeah. That's why cancel culture didn't work. You know that, right? The reason cancel culture ultimately when it's read about and understood in the history books is the reason it lost was because it didn't factor in intent. If you didn't mean to hurt someone's feelings, it's not great that you did, but it's very different than if you did. Do you think it worked in the beginning though? Of course. Yeah, it was wild in the beginning. Of course it yeah. did. Because And you think do you think it's dead? Oh, I think it's on its back back okay. foot. Look, I think I think the concept of holding people accountable to bad deeds is a wonderful trait. But the branding of it, like what we did for a couple of years there, which is at any moment's notice being like, I don't like the way you looked at that person. You should be fought. Like yeah. that was fucking ridiculousness. Yeah, the because intent was taken out. It's hard for me to believe with what I knew about you from afar and now spending some time with you that you were like, oh, okay, this is going to be awesome. I'm going to make so much money on the back of these fucking guys. That's not what you wanted to do. You wanted to do, you wanted what I think a lot of the best entrepreneurs want, which is, ooh, this is a win, 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 win situation. Mm -hmm. And there's no way for me to afford to bring these guys back if I don't have this variable. People get confused. Who the fuck do you think supports nonprofits? <laughs> I love when people are like, uh, like, oh, uh, what? Who the fuck do you think gives donations? How do you think this shit works? You know, so no, good for you, man. But what, Intent, I, bro. What I think you might like is, so we did a limited edition box and I wanted, a, we, I, I wanted it, it to, you know, you talk about storytelling. So we got, the French government gave us permission to bring back 10 kilos of sand from Omaha Beach. 
Um, Amazing. it was sanctioned. We said this was going towards this charity. It's called the best defense foundation. So we did a limited edition. We did 500 units of, of the limited edition version. It came in a wooden ammo crate that we had uh, transitioning veterans hand make in Virginia beach. So it's a replica ammo Amazing. crate ammo can went in that was Amazing. branded inside the ammo can. You had the, uh, order from Eisenhower on that day written out in an old parchment oh paper, God, so uh, sick. sand from Omaha beach in a vial. Can and you then, send me a link to that? I'll, oh yeah. Like, like well, and I, I might even it. have an extra one. I'll, and I then, would um, love to see it. And then a limited edition challenge coin inlaid. And then obviously when you pulled that out, the shoes were in the bottom. Um, and every penny of that went to the, you know, the Fucking cause. Amazing. Um, and, and it was a, it was a huge moment for us. And, and it made me realize that like, Story this that, yeah. is the secret sauce. Yeah, this is the shit. This bro, is how you, you get out. The art yeah. always beats the math in the end, bro. The gray always beats out the black and white in this. What do you think religion is? What do you think the American dream is? Ah, oh, man, fuck. Of course, story. Story's everything. And I think that's the, that's the, but that's the hardest part to manufacture because like, well, if you're over the transactional the, yeah, well, email, yeah. SMS, like that's like the tactical stuff. That's yeah. the easy well, that's stuff. That's the commodity. That's yeah. like having a good product. Yeah. Bear, I apologize. I actually have to run. Oh, you're good. Well, but, this is a pleasure, but, man. No, no, no. Yeah. I want everyone to hear this. I don't feel like we even got going yet. Well, I'd love there's, to come back there's sometimes. Two, there's two ways to me. think about yeah. this. Okay. One, can we do part two? next year when I come to Virginia. I'd love to. Or if you want to do it sooner in case some like next summer. Yeah. If you want to do it sooner, come back in January and let's do part two. I just did a part two podcast where on my podcast okay. and it fucking crushed. I don't feel like we've even gotten into it yet. I think we need a part two. I would love, oh, I appreciate, I'm, I'm humbled that you would invite me back. Well, I'm loving the vibe, and, it's uh, so fun. Uh, you know, By I, the way, everybody, yeah. I'm not trying to be rude. This is like my life. I'm a practitioner. <laughs> I have a big meeting in Midtown that I have to run to and it's inappropriate for me to not be there. So I'm, uh, I gotta run. I apologize, but I promise you part two. All right, part two is coming with Gary V. Thanks, Gary.